lesson, we showed you how Jesus Christ made provisions for his church in order to continue the work of salvation. And this work of salvation consists in his what we call apostolic commission, wherein he taught his disciples and apostles his commandments and expected them to teach it to all their successors, which are the bishops. You will note that the so-called fathers of the church were all bishops and popes who were the successor of the apostles. We mentioned to the fact that whenever there is a breakdown in the system, wherein, wherein uh, the successors of the apostles and disciples are unable to do their jobs of teaching the people his commands and how to do them, then Christ intervenes in the history of men and teaches directly certain people his commands and how to do them. And we call this the golden thread. And by its very nature, this golden thread is quite fine and tiny, meaning to say, these are not grand renewals in the Catholic Church. So most often, the vast majority of the Catholics fall under one category, and that is Catholics without the Catholic faith. The golden thread are Catholics with the Catholic faith, and I repeat, they are always a very small group. Then we gave you signs to show you how God directly intervenes in the history of man. We showed you the examples of saints who knew the commands of Christ and how to do it seemingly from nowhere, definitely not from the bishops, and successors of the apostles. The first way by which Christ intervenes directly is by literally dropping on their laps books about the fathers of the church. You know, if only the whole Catholic Church would get the writings of the fathers, sit down, read them, and act upon them, the Catholic Church will have no problem. Of course, most Catholics today think that the Catholic Church has no problem, and simply because they have not really sat down or thought about the whole thing. The examples, the first example of Christ literally dropping copies of the writings of the Fathers of the Church on the lap of people that he had personally chosen are like Teresa of Avila, wherein she found the book Morals, once of the father of the church, and tried to impose morals, which is nothing but interpretation of scriptures. The book Morals simply starts with a scriptural text and tells us how to act upon them. And that's the whole thing about the fathers of the church. They simply write down the text, the words of Christ in scriptures, and then explains how to act upon them. And with that one book, Morals, 
Teresa of Avila was able to perform a great reform more in her order. But you can see, it was mostly within her own order, and so it's really a tiny portion of the Catholic Church that benefited from it. By the way, if you really want to find out the commands of Christ and how to do them, you don't even have to read all the fathers of the church, not even half of them. All you have to do is read one and try to read it well and understand it deeply, but all you have to do is read one work of the fathers of the church because they say exactly the same thing. They all quote scriptures and then shows us how to attain the knowledge that saves. Another example of a saint wherein Christ simply dropped the fathers of the church in his lap, well, this time he dropped, I think, several volumes, is Saint Alphonsus of Liguri. You see, Saint Alphonsus wrote a book entitled Preparation for Death. By its mere title, people don't like to read it, just as many, I suppose, would not want to listen to these uh, vignettes. But you know, in this preparation for that, which is so important, it prepares us for a holy death, practically everything he wrote down there was taken from the fathers of the church. And what he did simply was to quote them, several of them in each paragraph or each chapter. And there you have a beautiful book entitled Preparation for Death. The same thing happened to St. Thomas Aquinas when he was trying to reform the church. Well, it seems that the writings of the fathers fell into his lap. This time, I think, all the books of the fathers fell into his lap. And he used it to reform his era. That is why he has the book Catena Aurea, wherein each line of scripture was written, and St. Thomas placed there the interpretation of several, not one or two or three, but several fathers of the church. The second way by which God directly intervenes in his church is that after he had chosen specific persons like St. Francis of Assisi, St. Ignatius of Loyola, so what he does is first, he directly teaches St. Francis of Assisi. That's why you might be wondering where St. Francis learned all his spirituality when he has never attended a seminary. Well, obviously, he got it directly from God. So the second way is after he has chosen St. Francis, he would surround him with a small group, mind you, small group, who would learn from St. Francis. And so you have the small group of St. Francis with Juniper and the rest of them. So the same thing with St. Ignatius of Loyola, he would surround St. Ignatius with a small group, again a small group. The emphasis is small because whenever God renews his church, especially when he intervenes directly, it's always a fine, tiny thread. It's never a big thing or a grand thing, always very small, like the way Christ began. It was always with a small group. And so suddenly we have Francis and a small group, Ignatius and a small group, and they were the golden thread. Now there is a third way by which God intervenes directly, and this is by teaching people directly. In the case of St. Francis, well, he never got hold of the fathers of the church. He was taught directly. In the case of Teresa of Avila and St. Alphonsus of Liguri, they got hold of the fathers of the church. 
But there are many saints who never got hold of any copy of the fathers of the church and yet knew the commandments of Christ and how to observe them. A very good example, for instance, is Benedict the Moor. You know, Benedict the Moor was the son of slaves, African slaves. At the time when the whole family was taken from Africa, they were Muslims or Mohammedans probably, but they were not Christians. It was only when they were in Sicily that Benedict was exposed probably to the Catholic religion. He became a hermit, and it was when he was a hermit that he learned the commandments of Christ and how to do them, to the point that he was described as greatly knowledgeable in scriptures and the teachings of the fathers, to the point he became superior of the Franciscan convent, to the point that he became a reformer of the Franciscan congregation. So the question is, where did he learn the things he knew? Directly from God. Seeing, therefore, how God directly intervenes in the renewal of the church, we shall see that whenever these signs are present, it means that the ordinary procedure that Christ had established had broken down. And so in the next lesson, we shall see more how the golden thread runs, how it looks like that we may learn more from this fine thread, golden, but very fine, and are not corrupted by this vast Catholic church, but without Catholic faith. May the divine assistance always be with you.